2011 Raiders. Darren McFadden was one of the best running backs in the NFL during this time. Jason Campbell looked like the quarterback of the future. And we had one of the most nicest front sevens in the NFL. Started the season off 7-4. and four, And yet, couldn't get the job done. What's going on, Raider Nation, man? And first off, I'll, I want to talk about this 2011 Raiders squad, man. And it's basically one of my favorite Raider teams I've ever watched growing up. And just all the, the momentum that was going into that season. And that was the one season that experts were having us go to the playoffs after having a long, long playoffs uh, drought. But you have to start all the way back in the beginning. From 2003 all the way to 2009, during that seven-year span, the Oakland Raiders were pretty much one of the biggest laughingstocks in the NFL around this time. During those seven years, from 03 to 09, the Raiders were 29 and 83. 29 wins, 83 losses, fam. It didn't help that every year we had different quarterbacks every season, different head coaches. We had busts both in free agency and in the draft. And after rebuild, after rebuild, after rebuild, after rebuild, the Raiders would finally turn their luck around and it would start in the 2010 season. In the 2010 season, the first move the Raiders made was trading with the Cleveland Browns for defensive end slash outside linebacker Cameron Wembley in exchange for a third round pick. The next move they did was trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars for linebacker Quentin Groves in exchange for a fifth round pick. Then Al Davis would make two trades in one day, one being with the Washington Redskins for quarterback Jason Campbell in exchange for a fourth round pick in the 2012 draft in which would lead us cutting Jamarcus Russell. Thank God. <laughs> Then we would trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars again, but this time we would trade away our linebacker, Kirk Morrison, and our fifth round pick in exchange for a fourth rounder. And then we would sign this man right here. Oh, Joe, that ain't good enough. Come on, Joe. Ah! Raiders signed John Henderson, the longtime dude from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we were trying to really make a push in 2010 for becoming one of the, a respectable team and not a laughing stock. And things would get even better for us in the draft. In the first round, we would take Rolando McClain, which at the time looked like a very good mood. In the second round, we got Lamar Houston. In the third, we got Jared Valdir. And in the fourth round, the Raiders took Jacoby Ford. That Raider team that year under head coach Tom Cable, offensive coordinator Hugh Jackson, and defensive coordinator John Marshall, this team would go 8-8, eight and eight, including going 6-0 and no in the division, but would miss the playoffs the first time since the NFL merger. Now, during that year in 2010, on the offensive side of the ball, the Raiders had scored the six most points in the NFL. We were ranked 10th in total offense. Now, in the passing game, we weren't too good. We were ranked 23rd. But in the running game, we were ranked 2nd in the NFL in running the ball. On the defensive side, the Raiders were ranked 11th in the NFL in total defense. We were 2nd in the NFL at stopping the pass. With the, but the downfall of our defense was we were ranked 29th in the NFL at stopping the run. But it also got better for us that year because we had four Pro Bowlers that year. We had Richard Seymour, Namdi Asamoah, Zach Miller, and Shane Leckler. It finally seemed like after all these years, the Raiders were moving in the right direction. And the next step was to now become a playoff team, which now fast forwards us to 2011. So, January 4th of 2011, the Raiders would not extend Tom Cable's contract. <sighs> Typical Raiders stuff. And we would promote offensive coordinator Hugh Jackson to becoming the head coach. The Raiders would also lose key pieces during that offseason. 
losing our best defensive player, letting Namdi Asamoah go into the Philadelphia Eagles, and Zach Miller would go to the Seattle Seahawks. The Raiders wouldn't make a lot of noise in free agency, so we're going to fast forward to the draft. Now, the Raiders didn't have a first round pick in that draft due to the Richard Seymour trade in 2009. But in the second round, we would take Stefan Wisniewski out of Penn State. And in the fifth round, we took Denarius Moore from Tennessee. And of course, in a supplemental draft, Al Davis's ever last draft pick, we would take Terrell Pryor out of Ohio State. Now, you looked at the lineup, we had Jason Campbell at quarterback, Darren McFadden at running back, Jacoby Ford, Denarius Moore, and Darius Hayward Bay as wide receivers. Tight end would be Kevin Boss. On the offensive line, you had Jarrett Veldeer, Stefan Wisniewski, Samson Satelli, that 66 Cooper guy, and Khalif Barnes. And on the defensive line, you had Lamar Houston, Richard Seymour, Tommy Kelly, and Matt Shaughnessy. Linebackers were Rolando McClain, Quinton Groves, and Cameron Wembley. In our secondary, we had Stanford Route, Chris Johnson, Lito Shepard, Tyvon Branch, Michael Huff, and Matt Giordano. Remember Matt Giordano? <laughs> but anyways, with Hugh Jackson at head coach, it would now look as if the Raiders would be coming playoff team. And now we're going to do very quick recaps of what happened during that season. So week one against the Denver Broncos, the Raiders would beat the Broncos 23-20 as Darren McFadden would have 150 yards rushing, averaging 6.8 yards a carry. And on the defensive side of that, the Raiders had four sacks, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and an interception. Going to week two, the Raiders would lose to the Buffalo Bills 38 to 35. Jason Campbell would pass for 323 yards, two touchdowns and throw a pick. Denarius Moore had five catches for 146 yards and a touchdown. The defense would have a sack and an interception, but they gave up 223 yards rushing, which Fred Jackson had 117 of those rushing yards. And of course, we lost to this man right here, Ryan Fitzpatrick. But now we're going to go to week three. The Raiders would defeat the New York Jets 34 to 24. Darren McFadden would have a career high of 171 yards rushing, ran for two touchdowns, averaging nine yards a fucking carry. For <laughs> like, goddamn, against Rex Ryan's defense, man. And Oakland's defense would have four sacks and an interception. In week four, the Raiders would lose to the New England Patriots 31 to 19. The Raiders would put up 504 yards of total offense and Darius Hayward Bay would have four catches for 115 yards. But Jason Campbell would throw two picks in that game. And on the defensive side of the ball, the Raiders gave up 183 yards rushing. And we let Wes Welker have nine catches for 158 yards and a touchdown. Now, after going two and two, at the time, the Raiders were going in the right direction for the team. But unfortunately, we'll be hit with this terrible, tragic news right here. Now, the Raiders would have to play the very next day and they would beat the Houston Texans 25 to 20 in honor for Al Davis. Darius Hayward Bay would have seven catches for 99 yards and scoring a touchdown. And on the defensive side, the Raiders would have three sacks and two interceptions, including this game-winning interception right here. After that game, now that Al Davis had passed on, on October 13th, Hugh Jackson would make his own trade with the Seattle Seahawks and would pick up linebacker Aaron Curry in exchange for a seventh round pick in 2012 and a conditional pick in 2013. In week six, the Raiders would now win their second game in a row, making them go four and two, beating the Cleveland Browns 24 to 17. On the offensive side of the ball, the Raiders ran for 151 yards, which Darren McFadden had 91 of those rushing yards. He also averaged 4.6 yards a carry and scored a touchdown in that game. And on the defense, the Raiders would have two sacks and only allowed 65 yards rushing. 
But just as everything was going great for the Raiders, this would happen. Oh. And he's taken down a Jason Campbell would break his collarbone and would be out for the remainder of the season. So here it is. We lose our owner, Al Davis, the week before. And now we lose our starting quarterback for the year with a broken collarbone. And Jason Campbell is basically done for the 2011 season. Now, the only quarterbacks we had on the roster were Kyle Bowler and Terrell Pryor. Now, you would think the Raiders would see if they had any potential or anything like that in Terrell Pryor and just let him start or just give it to Kyle Bowler and just run with it. Pryor was serving the NFL mandated five game suspension at the beginning of the season due to his uh, Ohio State scandal. But after the Houston Texans game, he was reinstated to the NFL and can play again. But despite all of that, <sighs> Hugh Jackson would make this move right here. The Raiders would trade with the Cincinnati Bengals for Carson Palmer in exchange for a first round pick and a conditional second round pick. Now, I'm not going to lie. This pissed me off when I was I was in high school and I remember this like yesterday. It pissed me off so badly that we gave up all that and especially for Carson Palmer. But it did make sense a little bit. Hugh Jackson was the quarterback's coach and the offensive coordinator at USC which Carson Palmer was at. Uh, Hugh Jackson was on the coaching staff of the Cincinnati Bengals while Carson Palmer was there, so that's why there's that huge connection. But the very next week, the Raiders would lose 28-0 to to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, Darren McFadden at this time was leading the NFL in rushing yards with 610 yards. He also had four touchdowns and was averaging five yards a carry, so it was like, okay, we lose our quarterback for the year. We're just going to have to run it heavy with Darren McFadden since he's leading the NFL in rushing yards. In this game, Darren McFadden would only run the ball two times for four yards and would leave the game with a high ankle sprain and wouldn't play for the remainder of the season. So look at this three-week gap. We lose our owner, rest in peace to the greatest, Al Davis. Then the next week, we lose our quarterback for the year. And now we lose our best offensive player. Man, we have, su we, we have such good luck, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. But in this game, Kyle Bowler would start. Even though Carson Palmer was with the team, Kyle Bowler would start the game. But he would be benched in just two quarters for throwing three interceptions. Which then, Carson Palmer would make his debut as an Oakland Raider by throwing for 8 out of 21 for 116 yards and throwing three interceptions. God damn. Going into their bye week, the Raiders had a 4-3 and three record, but the Raiders would lose after their bye week to the Denver Broncos with Tim Tebow as the starting quarterback. We would lose 38-24. Michael Bush would have 96 yards rushing, averaging 5.1 yards a carry. Jacoby Ford would have five catches for 105 yards and score a touchdown. And in Carson Palmer's first start as a Oakland Raider, he would throw for 332 yards and throw for three touchdowns, but also threw for three interceptions. The defense gave up 299 yards rushing fam. Willis McGahee had 163 of those rushing yards, and Tim Tebow had 118 of those rushing yards. But the momentum would change in Week 10 against the San Diego Chargers on a Thursday night game, where the Raiders would win 24 to 17. Michael Bush had 242 yards from scrimmage, 157 of those yards being rushing yards and 85 were receiving yards. Denarius Moore would have five catches for 123 yards and score two touchdowns. And on the defensive side, the Raiders would have six sacks, three of them coming from Cameron Wembley, 
one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, and an interception. The very next week, the Raiders would beat the Minnesota Vikings 27 to 21. Michael Bush would run for 109 yards and score a touchdown. And the defense would have four sacks and come up with three interceptions. The Raiders would now go on a three game winning streak, beating the Chicago Bears 25 to 20. Marcel Reese had five catches for 92 yards. Michael Bush had 69 yards rushing and a touchdown. And the defense would have four sacks and come up with again, three interceptions in that game. This would now make the Raiders have a seven and four record we were basically in the playoff picture. It looked like we were going to go from eight wins the previous season to nine plus wins and would probably finally get a playoff berth after all these years. But that didn't happen. But it'd be short lived as the Raiders would lose the following game against the Miami Dolphins 34 to 14. Carson Palmer would have 273 yards passing, two touchdowns and throw an interception but the defense allowed 209 yards rushing and which Reggie Bush would have 100 of those rushing yards. Fast forward to the next week, the Raiders would lose against the Green Bay Packers 46 to 16. In this game, Carson Palmer had 247 yards for a touchdown and four fucking interceptions. <laughs> I'm not even gonna recap that game anymore. <laughs> they would again lose the following week against the Detroit Lions 28 to 27. Carson Palmer would have 367 yards passing and a touchdown, and Darius Hayward Bay would have eight catches for 155 yards and scored a touchdown, but Calvin Johnson would have nine catches for 214 yards, fam. He would also score two touchdowns, and also in this game, it wouldn't help that Nandamakan Sue would block our game-winning field goal. So now, after all that, after losing three games in a row, the Raiders would finally beat the Kansas City Chiefs in Week 16 in overtime, 16 to 13. Denarius Moore would have four catches for 94 yards and a touchdown, and the defense would come up with two interceptions. And not only that, but J Sebastian Janikowski would win the game with this game-winning field goal. And the Raiders have won for a fifth consecutive time in Kansas City. They have held on, and on Christmas Eve, no better present for Hugh Jackson and the Raiders. Now we are here at the final week of the regular season week 17 where the Raiders were going to play against the San Diego Chargers and now we're sliding further and further out the playoff picture and now we had to depend on the Denver Broncos losing to the Kansas City Chiefs and surprise surprise they did the Denver Broncos had now lost and now it was up to the Oakland Raiders if they win this game man they go nine and seven and they end up being in the playoffs. Stepping up and he throws the long ball. It is picked off. Intercepted by Matt Giordano. First and ten is an end around. Lewis Murphy down the sideline. There's the throw. It's caught. Touchdown. Darius Hayward Bay. Third and nine. Rivers. It is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Antonio Gates. Second down. And seven. A floater ball thrown, but Rivers completes to Gates. All right, first and goal here is Colbert. And he's in for the touchdown. Mike Colbert will run it out to the 15, to the 20, to the 30 with a blocker. He's to midfield. Down to the 30. Down to the 20. He will go all the way. 105 yards and five. Here's Palmer after the pump. Able to complete more. 
He's pulled down from behind. Inside the 15 by third and seven. Rivers to the end zone. Is he out? No, he's in. Touchdown, Vincent Jackson. Play for by Palmer. Throws the middle. Hayward Bay. Down to the 30. And 43. Palmer throws. End zone. Touchdown. Kevin Rivers with the throw. Oh, what a catch. By Floyd, cuts to the right, to the five, he's in, touchdown, Malcolm Floyd, with Palmer to the sidelines, intercepted, it is picked off by Antoine Kaysen. So the Chargers take over, now the interception by Kaysen. And just like that, man. The Raiders will lose going 8-8 eight and eight yet again and will finish third in the division, losing to the San Diego Chargers. And that was it for us. After that, we pretty much didn't get better as the years came after that. Hugh Jackson was fired. Jason Campbell was let go to another team. Carson Palmer wouldn't even be there that long and he would end up going to another team. And it's just crazy, man. What if Darren McFadden never got hurt? What if Jason Campbell never broke his collarbone? Who knows what this team will be? Will we be a playoff team? Who knows? But it's crazy how we started this season off seven and four, and it looked like we were taking that next step. And unfortunately, we just did the Oakland Raider thing and came up short. It's your boy Byron. Until next time, y'all.